a sports drama with some great characters and plenty of brooding drama. Let's talk about Challengers. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm here to talk to you about Challengers, which is coming to theaters on April 26, 2024. There's a new film by Luca Guadagnino that stars Zendaya and some other people. They're very good as well. It is a sports drama about two tennis stars and this seemingly worthless match that seems to have so much more riding on it than anyone expected. My hot take is I definitely think you should watch it. I love this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's a sports drama that has a lot more drama than sport, but it is good. It has this kind of like nice, dark, brooding style and a dry wit that will grab your attention and keep it through game, set, and match. I really enjoyed it. I love the characters. I loved a lot about this film. So I definitely think you should check it out when it comes to the years on April 26, 2024. So all that being said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't want to know what happened in this film, and you might not because there are some big surprises throughout, then uh, I would turn it off when I get to the ending. But before that, though, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler free. I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So I'll just have the tennis ball right here. So in Challengers, it starts out with a match between Art Donaldson, who is this like tennis superstar. He is up there with all the other tennis greats. He is 31 and coming back from injury. So playing in this kind of like local uh, tournament just to kind of like get some reps in, get some confidence. On the other side, you have Patrick Zwieg, who is this kind of like tennis player that is down on his luck. He, I guess, was a pro or is a pro, but hasn't really been doing much recently. He seems to have financial problems. He seems to just kind of like be a mess. He is on the other side. And watching this is Zendaya, or in the film, Tashi Donaldson, who is Art's wife. She is kind of like a focal point of this match. And as it's happening, you find out some more about all these characters, all these, all the things involved, and some pretty shocking revelations. So all that being said, things I liked about this film. The first, I love the humor. It is a very funny movie. It has this kind of like dry, dark sense of humor that is just wonderful. It's not like a comedy, but it has plenty of really, really funny moments, plenty of like nice moments to break up what is a very kind of brooding, artsy type of drama. The second thing I love, I love the chemistry. There is there's some real chemistry between the characters and it really makes you want to root for them, makes you kind of fall in love with them. I love the way that they all kind of interacted. It was a lot of fun and it really kind of like brightened up some of the scenes in this movie. The third thing I loved, I love the style. Like I keep saying, it has kind of like a dark brooding style, almost like artsy at times. It really kind of emphasizes the drama uh, and there is plenty of drama in this movie and some of the interactions between the characters. Uh, and I just loved it. It kind of grabs you from the start and then holds on as this movie progresses. The fourth thing I loved, I love the soundtrack. There are some great classical songs in this to kind of like show an air of privilege that, uh, you know, the Donaldsons live in, uh, Art and Tashi. But there's also some interesting techno music that flares up during some of the matches and during some of the more hectic moments of the movie. It should be noted that this film has music by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, and it definitely shows. Uh, and the last thing I love, I love the sports action. Look, it's a sports drama, and there is definitely some good tennis action in this film. Uh, it's not the focal point, strangely. Like, the focal point is the drama and the things that happen, but the tennis action is fun to watch. It's good. It's well done. It is exciting and emotional as well. So all that being said, things I didn't love as much. The first, there are some character decisions that happen, uh, you know, later in the film. It drives some of this, it, it drives the story forward, but they kind of came out of nowhere. Again, not a big deal because I still, still love this film, but there are some weird kind of character decisions that happen. Uh, the second thing I lo didn't love, I'm going to say the techno music. I liked the music overall, but during some of the more hectic scenes, some of the scenes that have like, you know, big revelations or kind of like a lot going on. The techno music kind of blares up to kind of help with the cacophony of everything happening, but it makes the actual dialogue hard to hear. It might have just been the theater I was in, but I missed some of the lines, you know, pivotal lines that were happening during these scenes because the techno music was like so loud and like drowning out everything else. Maybe that's by design. Maybe that is part of the idea, but it, I didn't love it because I wanted to hear what was going on. The last thing I didn't love as much some of the tennis action there are some scenes where it goes into like a first person mode which is interesting it's an interesting shot but it makes it tough to follow it makes it tougher to see what is happening so i didn't love those as much but there were only a few of those so it's a, again a very minor thing about this film so all that being said challengers is coming to theaters on april 26 2024 like i said i definitely think you should watch it i love this film i thought it was a lot of fun it was a nice kind of surprise and 
I really liked going in blind because there are some revelations that happen during this movie that uh, are, are big surprises if you don't know what's happening at the start. So I would recommend not seeing anything about it, not watching trailers, not reading about it. Just go and enjoy this film. That being said, I'm going to tell you a little about the ending. So if you don't want to know what happens in this movie, if you want to take my recommendation, I would turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So like I said, the main event of Challengers is this tennis match between Art Donaldson and Patrick Zwieg at this uh, small, I guess it's called a Challenger because it's not really a big tournament. It's like a small like local uh, tournament in New Rochelle, New York. Now, Art and Patrick are on opposite sides of the bracket, but they make their way to the finals. They are playing each other. And what should have been like a know-nothing tournament now has this big pivotal match between these two people. Now, you don't know why it's so pivotal at the start. You just know that Art is this like famous tennis pro who is recently coming off an injury. He has never like won the Open, but he has plenty of accolades and he wins enough to kind of like be in the limelight. But he has never like hit that pinnacle. He's coming off an injury and his wife... Tashi, who is like his tennis manager and also seems to be like the business person of this relationship, enters him into this challenger to kind of give him some reps, give him some confidence. Now, Patrick is this player who used to be pro and seems to have fallen on his luck. He has no money in his bank account. He is like barely scraping by. He's like sleeping in his car, uh, not able to eat. He's like hooking up with people to try to like find a place to stay. But he is a skilled tennis player, as you can imagine, because he made it to the finals. So... That is the kind of like backdrop of this film, but there is a lot more going on. And the story kind of unfolds by like telling you about the backstory as this match happens. You'll have some pieces of the match and then you'll have like a scene about some of the background. Uh, I'm just going to say it, tell it chronologically because that's the easiest way for me to kind of do it. But again, one more one more plug here. If you don't want to know what happened to this movie, turn it off now because there are some big revelations that happen right about now. So... What we do find out is that Art and Patrick, they were like best friends. They were essentially brothers. Uh, they went to a boarding school for tennis early on. They started being roommates at age 12 and kind of like stayed together throughout their uh, boarding school time. And then they also played together. They played in like the youth tennis leagues. They were in like a youth U.S. Open and won the doubles uh, tournament. And then they were set to play uh, in the finals for the singles. So they were both like tennis phenoms. Now, Patrick was a little bit more kind of like immature. He's a little bit more impulsive. Uh, Art seems to be kind of a little bit shyer, uh, you know, maybe not taking as many risks. But together, they were a lot of fun to see. I love seeing like their interactions. They really had like great chemistry together, especially in these scenes when they are really, really close friends. So it was really fun to kind of get that backstory that you didn't know at the start when they were kind of first there. You didn't know that they knew each other, that they were super, super close. And you start to wonder why. Well, you find out why right about now. Now, at this U.S. Open, there was also this rising tennis phenom, uh, Tashi Duncan, who was like already signed, already had like big endorsements. She was the pinnacle of like women's youth tennis at the time. She was competing in this tournament and she met both Art and Patrick. Now uh, they, they creeped on her. They went to a party that she had the night before their big match when they should be sleeping, they should be preparing. They were at this party trying to get Tashi's number. Eventually she came to hang out at their hotel. Uh, they kind of like start to hook up and then she stops and is like, whoever wins tomorrow can get my number. Now this was a big thing for Patrick and Art because Patrick had basically told Art that he was going to let him win. Like he didn't care about winning, I guess, you know, youth tennis players who win, who, who win like the youth U S open rarely go on to like have big tennis fame. So he just didn't really care. He was like, you know, I'll give it to you. Art. That's fine. But when this challenge happened, it turns out that they had a real match and Patrick ended up winning. So Patrick got Tashi's number and they started dating. Now, Art and Tashi both ended up going to Stanford for tennis. And uh, it seems like Art was playing the long game here. Part of his like tennis game is described as like, he's not taking risks. He plays like percentage tennis. So he, you know, plays the game until he can like get a killing strike rather than take big risks for big rewards. Now, part of this seems to be what happened in Stanford. He and Tashi were both at Stanford. He kind of like started to inject the little seeds of doubt between her and Patrick. And he also is the same when, with Patrick when Patrick comes to visit. Now, this all comes to a head because Patrick and Tashi are hooking up. And she says something about his game that kind of like angers him. And I think, you know, the doubt that he that Art had placed was like in his head as well. And he gets upset about this. 
Um, they have a little a fight and they stop hooking up because she is going to go prepare for her match. This makes Patrick very, very upset. And so he just leaves, doesn't go to her match, which he was supposed to go to see anyways. And at this match, Tashi hurt her knee there. She's playing a normal game. She goes for like, a, you know, a hit. Her knee twists the wrong way. She hurts her knee and she goes down. Art runs down to see her like comfort her. Patrick is not there. he left. Uh, so Art is with her in the hospital when Patrick finally comes back after he heard he, you know, tries to go in and both Art and Tashi tell him to like leave, to go away. This hurts Patrick and it seems like this is when Patrick and Tashi broke up. Now, Art and Tashi didn't start dating here. A few years later, Tashi is now like a tennis coach. She was like all about tennis. She was like an intellectual for the game. She was analyzing people. That's why her and Patrick had a fight because she, I think, tried to give him some tennis advice or try to like give him some advice to have him up his game. And he didn't want to. He just wanted to keep playing pro, keep like messing around, having fun. And Tashi wanted to mold him into like a tennis superstar. Now, a few years later, she goes to visit Art and, you know, essentially like tries to give him advice as well. He asks for her to become his coach to like help train him. And this is where the Donaldsons are born. It seems like they started dating after this, got married. Tashi was uh, training Art, molding his career, molding his game, molding his overall persona. And it became almost like a business between them. Art definitely loved Tashi at the start, but it seems like over time, as their life became more complicated, as you know, she became more pointed in like his recovery and making sure that he was doing everything he could to become a super athlete, it seems like some love was lost between them. Both love of the game for Art because he was the one that was playing the matches and you know getting critiques from Tashi, and love of their marriage because I think their marriage basically became a big business relationship. Now, one thing that could have also put a damper on this is it seems like Tashi still had some feelings for Patrick. We had a few scenes during their life. Uh, you know, one was at a tournament in Atlanta where uh, it seems like Tashi and Patrick hooked up. You don't really know if they fully hooked up, but they definitely had some connection there. And then when Art sees them at, you know, grabbing a drink together, he goes to sign like a fan's uh, hat, turns around and they're both gone. You don't know what happened. It seems like they probably hooked up then. It seems like Tashi still like had some feelings for Patrick. The next one happened uh, right during this challenger. Now, years after that, that one incident, I think it was like eight years after, Tashi is trying to get Art back into tennis shape, back into tennis form. And so she entered him into this little challenger in New Rochelle. Now, you don't know if she knew that Patrick was on the other side. You don't know about that. But it turns out Patrick was there. And it's very possible that uh, Tashi wanted Art to play Patrick so they could so they would like fuel his tennis game, fuel his passion, and maybe he would finally beat Patrick. Remember, they only played that one time at that final, and Art wasn't able to beat him. So maybe she thought this was something holding him back. Maybe she thought that if he was able to beat Patrick, that would propel his game forward. You don't really know, but now the match is happening, and Patrick starts off strong. He takes the first set, I think, uh, six to two. Art comes back and takes the next one, six to two as well. So they're tied on sets. Now, in the next set, they're tied. It's five to five. I think Art had the advantage. But as Patrick is getting ready to uh, serve, we find out some more backstory. It turns out that uh, I think it was the night before, or maybe a couple nights before. Um, you see that uh, that Art and Tashi, again, just don't have really a, like a great relationship. Uh, Art is really kind of, Art needs Tashi. I think he wants Tashi to love him, but he realizes that she doesn't. Uh, and he tells her that he is going to retire this year regardless of whether he wins the Open. Um, Tashi seems okay with this, but I think he knows that this is going to affect her because she has been trying to mold him into a tennis superstar, take his game to the next level for the longest time. And if he retires, she has nothing else to mold. And I think he realizes that their life will be very, very boring. And maybe that's not what she wants. I don't know. But he goes and like lays down on her. They like hook up for a little bit and then they stop. It's it's a weird kind of like robotic hookup. It's it's interesting, but they stop and he lays down on her and just asks her to hold him until he falls asleep. She does that and then leaves. So it seems like, you know, she is doing what she needs to kind of like fuel his career, but that's it. He le she leaves. We find out that she goes to meet up with Patrick. Now Patrick had earlier asked her to coach him. He said that, you know, he knows art. He knows that he's lost the love of the game. You can kind of see it in how he plays. And that Patrick thinks that he can finally have his career, but he just needs some coaching. He needs some help. And he thinks that Tashi can do that for him. He thinks that Tashi can like 
mold him. Patrick says that, you know, when he's playing on his game, he can be the best in the world. And Tasha's like, well, you haven't shown it yet. So it seems like she's against it, but Patrick wants this to happen. He gives her his number uh, to call him if she changes her mind. And it seems like this night after she puts Art to bed, she calls him. They meet up in his car. They drive. They talk. They have a fight. There are some emotions that happen. But eventually they do hook up. Now, during this during this like conversation, during this fight, Tashi asks Patrick to let Art win. Like She says, Art needs this. If he wins, then this will fuel his confidence. He can go all the way to the open. He can like have that year that he really wants and after the hookup patrick seemingly agrees but you know you don't really know if he's going to hold to it now back to the match it's 5-5 i believe art has the advantage and patrick is serving and he has this like strange serve where he puts his racket behind his head a few times and then serves earlier when they were friends and patrick had just started dating tashi art wanted to know if they had hooked up if they had slept together essentially and he's like look don't tell me you know you don't have to tell me but if you have just like do a regular serve, like not this weird serve. He wanted to do a serve like Art, where Art always puts the ball right on his racket, goes up and serves. So Patrick is coy about it, but eventually he does do a regular serve, which makes Art smile, but I think also makes Art a little sad because he is in love with Tashi. Uh, this is back when they were kids. He's still probably in love with Tashi, but back when they were kids, he was really in love with Tashi. So back to the match. Patrick is serving in like a 5-5 five, five set with, a, I think the score was like 40-30. Patrick does his normal serve, and he's look, he's looking at Tashi a lot during this. And he serves a couple like bad serves to give Art, I think, more advantage. Maybe they were tied, and now, now Art has the advantage. But, but then he does his like Art serve, his like regular serve. He, does, he, he looks like he's winding up for his normal serve, and then he puts his racket down, puts the ball in his racket, looks at Art, and then serves. And Art knows what this means because they were old friends. He just kind of like looks at Patrick the entire time and like the ball just like sails off. So like he doesn't even go for it. And Art's like, seriously? And Patrick like, you know, smiles and grins and Art yells at, like yells an, an expletive, which gives him, you know, which gives him a warning, gives him like a, a point disadvantage. And Patrick ends up taking the set. Now they both sit down. Art is, you know, really upset with this. He seems to like know what happened. He seems, you know, he looks at Tashi, but he's also fired up. Like he, uh, after the initial shock, he seems to get fired up. And the next set, they just have this ridiculous volley. They go back and forth. It is amazing tennis. They're like running and sliding for uh, the ball. They're going back and forth. And as they are doing this, they're getting closer and closer. So they start off at the edges of the court. And then get closer and closer to the net as they are volleying back and forth until eventually they are like right next to each other, volleying back and forth. It is very unrealistic, but it's also really exciting to watch. And Tashi loves this because she has been wanting Art and Patrick to play really good tennis their entire time. She, uh, you know, went back when they first played, she said the only thing she wanted to see was like really phenomenal tennis from them. It seems like now she is finally getting it. She's finally seeing them play, you know, with passion, with their hearts. She is really into it. She like yells uh, during this, during this volley. And eventually the ball pops up a little bit and Art jumps to hit the ball and he jumps over the net. So like the ball is still in Patrick's side of the court. Art jumps up, like leaps up, gets ready to hit. I think he hits the ball. It's probably on Patrick's side. So he probably, you know, gets a fault for this or whatever the tennis term would be. But he hits it and then falls into like Patrick and Patrick catches him. He doesn't let him fall. He catches him. And they're both smiling. And they both look at each other and smile. And that's the movie. That's the end. What happens? You don't know. Like, you don't know what happens in the match. You don't know what happens. But it seems like, strangely, maybe Art and Patrick's uh, friendship has been uh, rekindled. Maybe. Maybe they've, maybe they've found the love of the game that they've been missing when they didn't have each other in it. You know, they grew up together so much. They played with each other so much. They trained with each other so much. That maybe when they were out of each other's lives, they lost their passion for the game. And maybe now they have it. You don't know. Maybe they're going to play doubles and maybe Tashi's going to be their coach and they're going to be a doubles phenom. You don't know, but at least they had one good game of tennis, I guess. Probably a game. And they maybe have found their passion. Hopefully they can keep it. But that is Challengers. That is the movie. Like I said, I really liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was really funny. I loved the chemistry between art and patrick i thought it was really really nice at the start especially when you're first seeing them when they're young they're a lot of fun to watch and the the chemistry between them is is really kind of 
it kind of leaps off the screen. And I liked Zendaya's character a lot. She it was fun to see her be like cold and calculating and just like like a badass. Like she controlled both of them. She like knew tennis. She knew how to like manipulate them, and she did throughout. So I really liked this film. I liked it a lot, and uh, I definitely think you should check it out. So check it out when it comes to theaters on April twenty sixth, twenty twenty four. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. A sports drama, a sports drama with, a sports drama with plenty of brooding. Bro I'm here to talk to you about challenges. Ah, damn. There's a new film by Luca Guadagni Guadagnino. If you don't want to know what happens in this film, yeah, we start off at the edges of the whatever a tennis thing is called. Tennis court court. <laughs>